D&D Beyond messed up. Again. Last week, they posted this post. Over the coming months, you're going to see big changes here on D&D Beyond. Here's a breakdown of what we're working on. And they posted a GIF showing all the new classes and then all the old classes under a legacy tab. The changeling itself is a very long boy with a lot of stuff in here. But the biggest takeaway from this is that they would be replacing all the old magic spells and magic items from 2014, updating them to the 2024 versions, which when I first saw this, I thought, okay, that kind of makes sense. You know, it's a rebalance, it's a patch. It's just like when I play a video game like Apex Legends or Fortnite and I bring out a new season and everything changes for everyone across the board. Obviously, I thought about that for more than a couple of seconds and realized that's not the same thing at all. A lot of people have spent a lot of money on D&D Beyond. Fortnite and Apex Legends are free. Yes, D&D Beyond is technically free and yeah, you can use the character sheet for them, but people like myself have spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on books and we expect those books to work with our character sheets and they no longer would be. The books we bought and the character sheets we're using would no longer be compatible. And yes, I know what you're thinking. They always said that this would be backwards compatible. The 20, 2014 core rule books and the 2024 core rule books and everything around them would be backwards compatible. Don't worry about it. And then they go ahead and do this. But the thing that got people really up in arms was the fact that they said, if you wanted to continue to use your 2014 spells and magic items, you just need to homebrew them. Just type it all in yourself. It's easy. And no one wanted to do that. No one asked for this. People got mad. Now, there is an interesting point from Christian Hoffer here. Rephasing to be more direct, d and Beyond struggles to implement the 2024 rule set on their character sheets is not an indictment on the rule set's backwards compatibility. I think this view speaks to how intertwined people view d and Beyond and d and 5e, but that's it. And this is fair. When Watsi says that like the core rule books will be backwards compatible, that has nothing to do with d and Beyond, but it gets real muddled because d and Beyond is owned by Wizards of the Coast they're making the core rule books and they obviously have this big plan in the future to have D&D Beyond intertwined even more than it is now with D&D. So, so you would expect the stuff they're saying around the core rule books and this new update and the future of D&D to match up with what's happening on D&D Beyond. Anyway, two days after D&D Beyond then posted this tweet, which is cool then because normally they go radio silence about this stuff. Like normally they just won't answer questions. They won't do anything. The a la carte stuff being removed is a key example of this. But here they did release some clarifications that just made more people angry because it barely clarified anything. It just kind of said the same thing and people were still a little confused and very angry because it was fundamentally saying, yeah, we're going to replace all the spells and stuff just on your character sheets. Don't worry about it. You'll still have access to your books. And people were like, we don't care about that. We want the character sheet stuff. That's what, we, that's what we're angry about. And I have to be completely honest with you guys. I went to and fro about this whole thing. I realize now that, yeah, just jumping up and changing a system completely that people pay for and use often without telling them in a weird way that looks like it's just a money grab to try and get people to update to the new rules is bad. Always giving consumers like the freedom of choice. It sounds so silly to say out loud. Obviously, let the consumers give them what they want and they don't want this. But on my side, the reason why I flip-flopped was because I fully intend to upgrade to the 2024 rule books and I kind of wanted the 2014 stuff like gone. You know, I, I want to just move on to the next thing. I didn't want to be stuck in this limbo between two things. So I wouldn't have been that mad with these changes, <laughs> but seeing the uproar from people who want to play the 2014 way, the old way, showed me just how like blind Wizards of the Coast was to that because it's fine for me to be blind to that because I live in my own little ecosystem, but Wizards of the Coast should be fully aware of how people are going to react to them changing their whole site. It should probably be just obvious to them, but then they should also have like someone whose job it is or a team of people whose job it is to make sure that these kind of like mess ups don't happen, especially now because it's becoming a meme that they keep messing up and making bad decisions to the point where I'm starting to think that it's just good publicity for them. Like, <laughs> 
bad publicity is good publicity. Like, either they do something like this once every three months, or they just don't make it into the news at all. So they, they're choosing the news. Anyway, so people got real angry at this, and then literally yesterday, they posted a game. Last week, we released a change log detailing how players would experience the 2024 core rulebooks on D&D Beyond. We heard your feedback loud and clear, and thank you for speaking up. Players who only have access to the 2014 Player's Handbook will maintain their character options, spells, and magical items in their character sheets. Good, so they're staying exactly the same. Players with access to the 2024 and 2014 Digital Player's Handbooks can select from both sources when creating new characters. Great, they, they put on a toggle. Players will not need to rely on homebrew to use their 2014 player options, including spells and magic items, as recommended in previous change logs. It's interesting that they've, like, latched on to this, like, last bit about the homebrew stuff. That was what, like, people were most, like, baffled about, because, like, you're making me homebrew all the uh, magic items that I bought and have been using for the past five years. People were very mad at that, but, like, that wasn't the issue. The issue was them just changing everything anyway. But they rolled it back. Here's the full change log. Fundamentally saying that players will continue to have access to their free, shared, and purchased items on D&D Beyond, with the ability to use previously acquired player options when creating characters and using character sheets, and that we are not changing players' current character sheets except for relabeling and renaming. So there will be changes on your character sheets, with stuff like races being changed to species, and inspiration to heroic inspiration, and cast spell to magic. So they did it. That was the roller coaster ride of the past couple of days. It's very messy. It does not need to be this messy. I am and apologize for Wizards of the Coast sometimes, as far as, like, I push back against the extreme hatred and vitriol from a lot of the community. But at the same time, I very much think that it is odd that Wizards of the Coast keep messing up. Now, there are times where the community make mountains out of molehills, but then there are other times that Wizards of the Coast just make mountains. You know that old joke of, like, oh, if I had a penny for every time this happened, well, I'd had two pennies, but it's worth it happened twice. That's like this with Wizards of the Coast, except it's like, oh, if I had a penny for every time Wizards of the Coast messed up, I'd only have a hundred pennies, and that is very weird that it's happened a hundred times. And there are a lot of people out there who think that messing up in a big way, and I say messing up, I mean like going against the community in a big way, and then rolling it back, is just as bad as just going against the community in a big way, because they're testing the waters, they're seeing what they can get away with, and they're finding the line that they can push people to without them leaving. And when they find that line, they're going to live on that line. That is what it feels like. Now, we have no idea what's going on over there. I would love to know what's going on over there, but we have no idea. Is it greed? Is it incompetence? Is it just like them having a really unlucky bad year? Is it one individual? Is it multiple individuals? Is it everyone at the company? Probably not. I'm pretty sure it's not. But also, the community is doing a phenomenal job of calling them out on their stuff and pushing back. Anyway, uh, that's it. Subscribe and thank you for watching and I'll uh, catch you later. Bye, 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 bye.